Hey y'all, welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle leak code problem 283, move zeros. After that, we'll cover an actual variant of the original question that Meta asks. All right, let's get started. So here, after reading the problem statement, we're giving a vector of numbers that consists of zeros and non-zeros. And what we wanna do is we wanna move all of the zeros to the end of the vector. For the non-zeros left over, they should be put in the beginning in front of the zeros. But wait, there's also a constraint here. Their relative order needs to be preserved. So what exactly does that mean? Let's take a quick look at the example given by leak code. So clearly looking at this vector here, we can see that there are two zeros. And then in the output, after we've moved the zeros, we can see that they're now at the last two indices. As for the non-zeros, those are in the order of 1, 3, and 12 in our input. And we can see in the output that the order is retained. We have 1, 3, and 12. Okay, so we preserved the relative order, but on top of that, there is one last constraint we need to note here, and that is we have to do this in place. This means we can't use an external data structure, like another vector. When I first read the problem statement, my initial thought was to loop over it once. What we would do is we would push all the non-zeros to a new vector. Then we would go ahead and loop a second time, this time pushing all the zeros to the end of that vector. Because of this constraint, we are slightly limited in our approach, so we're not able to solve it this way. How exactly do we solve it then? Okay, let's go through an example. So whenever we have to manipulate a vector in place, we typically have to use the two-pointer approach where we use two zero index variables. We're gonna have one pointer, i. This is gonna be used to iterate over each of the numbers. And then we're gonna have another pointer, s, for swap. This is gonna represent the position to place the next non-zero number should we encounter one with the pointer i. Think about S as the gatekeeper index. Everything before it is non-zero, and where S currently is, is the index for the next non-zero. Okay, on the first iteration, we encounter a zero. You'll see that we really only do something if we encounter a non-zero, but for this zero, we'll simply continue in the for loop and move on to the next. Same here for the second zero. On the next iteration, we do encounter a non-zero. So what do we do? We're gonna go ahead and swap 54 with the zero that is at our swap index. It's as if we're bubbling the zeros towards the end of our vector every time we see a non-zero. We're now gonna go ahead and increment S because we want it to represent the next position for the next non-zero to go. On the next iteration, we encounter another zero. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue. Now we encounter a negative 11, but wait, this is a negative number, so does this matter to us? No, for this problem, we only care if the number is a zero or a non-zero. It's the only important distinction we need to keep in mind. Because this is a non-zero, we're gonna go ahead and swap it with what is at our swap index, making that negative 11 and this is zero. Since an action was performed, we're gonna go ahead and increment our S. On the next iteration, we encounter a two. Because this is a non-zero, we're gonna go ahead and swap with the zero at our S index. On the last iteration, we encounter another zero, so we continue on, and with that, we have iterated over our entire vector. Ultimately, our result is gonna be 54, negative 11, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. The time complexity for this is big O, N. This is because we have a single for loop over the input array, and the space complexity is big O, 1. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get coding. Okay, so the only variable we need is the swap index, so let's go ahead and initialize that to 0. After that, we need to loop over each element. Recall, the only case where we need to do something is when we encounter a non-zero. So let's go ahead and write that if statement. 
Now, if we do encounter a non-zero, we'll swap it with the number at i. Don't forget to increment the swap index. And that's it. Let's go ahead and go over the variant now. Okay, so sometimes this variant is asked in the mock interviews at Meta, but other times they're asked in actual phone screens as well. If you're asked this, it's pretty much a warm-up for the follow-up leak code problem. The variant is quite simple. What if you had to move all the zeros to the beginning of the vector instead of the end? It's pretty much the opposite of the original leak code problem. My first thought, and probably most of yours, is to just flip the quality check in our if statement. This time, what we would do is we would swap whenever we'd encounter a zero, moving the zeros to the beginning and the non-zeros to the end. Let's go ahead and go over a problem and see if this would work. So applying the opposite logic, now whenever we encounter a zero, we want to go ahead and apply some logic to it. Okay, in this example here, we encounter a zero. We're gonna swap it with itself, which means we're gonna go ahead and increment i and increment our swap index. This time, now whenever we encounter a non-zero, we're just gonna go ahead and continue on. On the next iteration, we encounter a zero, meaning we're gonna swap it with our swap index and go ahead and increment those both. We're encountering another non-zero, so we're going to just continue. And once again, we're going to go ahead and just continue. It seems like this logic would work then, but what if after this we had another zero? In this case, on our next iteration, it's going to tell us to swap with what is at our swap index, meaning this zero is going to swap with the one. Therefore here, the relative order is not maintained. The one skips over the three and the 12. That's why we're not able to apply the same logic before and just change the if statement. Since that doesn't work, what do we do? Turns out what we have to do is iterate from the end to the beginning so we can maintain the relative order. Let's walk through this example. Here we encounter a zero, so we're gonna just continue on and decrement our i index. Next, we run into a non-zero. We want to go ahead and swap these two, bubbling the zeros towards the front and the non-zeros towards the back, and we're going to decrement i and decrement s. On this iteration, it's another non-zero, so we're going to swap with our swap index, bubbling the zero up here and the three here. Once again, decrement that i and the s index. In this case, it's a zero, so let's go ahead and continue. And we run into another non-zero, swapping again with our swap index, and decrementing both the i and the s. Again, we encounter a zero, so we're going to go ahead and skip that, and we have our final solution. We end up with 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 12, and the relative order is maintained. Now let's go ahead and make some changes to the code. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is change our swap index so it starts at the end of our vector. In our for loop, we're gonna change the direction that we're looping. i is gonna start at the last index and we're gonna keep decrementing until it's negative one. Lastly, we need to make sure our swap index is decremented every time. And believe it or not, that's all we have to do. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support us more, please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!